One of my guests tonight stars in the new Disney movie about characters who live in a video game. What would that be like? Oh, oh my god. Oh, okay. I've just got to concentrate and dodge these lightning bolts. It's all I've got to do. Oh, my wine! <laughs> ah! Let's start the show! Welcome, one and all. Oh, great lineup for you tonight. Oh, I tell you, it's a good looking sofa tonight. Yeah, it'll just be me letting it down. <laughs> no one? <laughs> okay. Hey, so, who have we got? Well, we've got Hollywood A lister Mark Wahlberg is here, ladies and gentlemen. Acting superstar Michael Fassbender is on the show. Hilarious American comic Sarah Silverman is here. <laughs> Plus, we've got music from Brit Award nominee Laura Umvula. Yes, we have. <laughs> uh, a huge hearty welcome to my fellow Irishman Michael Fassbender. Well, he's he's hot. Well, yeah, yes, yes. No, he's, he's actually he's half Irish. Half German. Yeah. You do think, what is it about Germany that the Irish find so appealing? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember the nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah Silverman is here. Not only a brilliant comedian, she's also one of the stars of the new Disney film, Wreck It Ralph. Now, it's all about video game characters who come to life. Oh, it's great when that happens, isn't it? Remember Tomb Raider, uh, Super Mario? <laughs> oh. and, and that time, they combined Grand Theft Auto with Sonic the Hedgehog. Remember that? <laughs> quite a short film. <laughs> hey, great to have Mark Wahlberg back on the show, star of Boogie Nights, Three Kings, and one of my favorites, Ted. Do you all see Ted? Yeah. yeah. Where he lives with a foul-mouthed teddy bear. And now, even though it was a comedy, they wanted to make sure the teddy bear didn't do anything a real bear wouldn't do. So, for instance, here's Ted drinking, and uh, here's a bear drinking. Yeah. Here's Ted going to the toilet, and here's a bear going to the toilet. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? Uh, here's Ted being promiscuous, and here's a bear being promiscuous. <laughs> Nice to see you all. How Very are you? Good. I'm really well. Are you all well? Very good. I yeah. feel really good because I have a security blanket <gasps> right here. You're funny, but she's really funny. Yeah, she's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so and look at you all fashioned up. I'm wearing fashion tights. Yeah. No, they are fashion tights. <laughs> I've been needing to get my thighs out lately. <laughs> I like it. Thank you. Yeah, Michael's in there. Yeah. I love your tights. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this started backstage. Oh, did it? Oh. Do you cut your own hair? What, what the patches? 
What's going on with this? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, from. Um, oh no! Do you, do you have you heard of? Thing? Do you have, have you heard of trepanning? No. It's where Are you, you drill drill it? little holes in your head to release pressure. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. So there. That's what you have. Yeah. It's a new thing. Is I was that trying true? it out. It didn't work. Is that just your pick? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. work. Seriously, I feel like we're on a plane. People are just. <laughs> Just different conversations are Why? coming up. Why God, I, would you? Have you had your meal? I don't know. Why you, would you? What are you watching? Why would you allow people to drink alcohol and come on a show in the evening? What, what, what's because going on here? that's social. That's a social I thing. I don't drink. No, it's a recipe no. for disaster. No. But I it said, did take acid about let me 40 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's vodka, by the way. Mixed with whiskey. <laughs> hey, listen, we must talk about, uh, Mark, your new movie. You produced it. You star in it. It's called Broken City. It opens on the 1st of March. And, like, as a producer, you've got a great cast together. Uh, well, we have Russell Crowe playing a corrupt mayor, a larger-than-life uh, crime figure who is very uh, charismatic and charming. Catherine Zeta-Jones plays his wife, who uh, my character is hired to investigate. He thinks he's having an affair. So I, I basically start to investigate her, and I start to unravel all this corruption. Then we have the great character actors like Jeffrey Wright and Barry Pepper and Kyle Chandler. Actually. Uh, offered the part of my character to Michael, but he passed. Oh. <laughs> Awkward! So, Awkward! There's so much I'm, energy I'm right here. <laughs> I, I had to play the part myself. <laughs> and I went in going to think he was going to be a sort of a, a like a cop story, crime thing, but it's more of a kind of political thriller, would you say? Well, the political backdrop, um, more, more often than not, the system fails us. So, you know, the political system, the fact that I got away with a lot of things in real life that I shouldn't have and I get to be a movie star is a problem. What right? you get away with? It is. It's a problem. <laughs> now, I turn my life around, <laughs> and I have done the right thing, but many people have been wrongfully convicted, and yeah. the system is flawed. So we need to figure that out. And, and our elected officials, more than not, are corrupted by power and enticed by money, and that's, that's a problem. That's a situation that we need to deal with. So. Well, we've got a clip. This is you and Russell Crowe as the mayor, and uh, the tables are about to be turned. What can I do for you, Billy? I don't know why you hired me. Stick with the adultery narrative. It's sexier. Yeah, lies are always sexier. Unfortunately, I've had enough this week to last me a lifetime. I hired you to investigate my wife. Investigate her for what? For not minding her own business is for what? For having a big mouth is for what? Asking too many questions is for what? You better be careful following your example, Billy. I might have to hire someone to investigate you. Yeah. You're good, man. I'll give you that. You got it all worked out, huh? Perhaps that's why the people keep electing me, Billy. Because I simply get the job done. So all this? It was all for the city? Everything I do is for this great city. I chose you. Because I own you. Oh. That was the exciting incident. It all, oh, it all kicks off. Wow. Mm, it's good. It's, it's a throwback to those great 70s character driven movies like Chinatown or Dog Day Afternoon or Serpico that I grew up watching with my dad. You know, James Cagney and Steve McQueen and John Garfield and Robert Ryan and these great kind of kind of ugly character actors, which made me feel confident in the possibility that I could be one of those guys. You know, that looked yeah. like my dad and reminded me of my dad, you know. Kind of short, little weird, uh, flawed, <laughs> but had some balls and would stand up for the every man. So there's more 
kind of ugly little weird people in the world than there are tall, good-looking people like Michael Fassbender. <laughs> those people root for me. Yeah, hence the fact that I got to star in the movie. <laughs> Have your kids seen any of your films? They've seen uh, moderate pieces of like uh, the the Disney football movie that I did. Oh, okay. And the other guys. Although my son did see a piece of Transformers, which I okay. didn't Have know. Have you finished Transformers? No, we haven't shot it yet. But oh. he's watched the ones that are the the ones that have preceded our movie, and. You know, they're playing football. We're playing football in our theater, and my youngest son, who's four years old, throws the football down, and he goes, fucking shit! <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, the same thing. I start laughing at first because he, he, he got stripped of the ball, and he just got stopped for the touchdown. So it was like, wow, it made sense what he said. But I was like, why did you say that? Get over here. I want to wash your mouth out with soap. And he kind of, like, wants to smile. Because he knows that he really made Daddy proud. But uh, <laughs> I said, you get over here and tell me why you said that. Where did you hear that from? And he looks at me and goes, Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how was we it, paid was the bills, it a, kid. Was it, a proud, was it a proud moment when you introduced them to uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Oh, my God. The Rock, who is the nicest guy in the world. They're huge fans of wrestling, and we're making this movie together. And so I this see is Pain, 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 Pain and Gain, Gain the Michael yeah. Bay movie, which is the reason why I'm starring in Transformers, because we work together on that movie. Oh, okay. I'm like, dude, you got to do me a favor. My kids are huge fans. Can you please come over and say hi? It's his day off. He's so gracious. He's like, you know what? I, I'd love to. I'm, I love kids. I have, you know, a daughter. And... He comes over, he comes in the trailer, they're all being shy, they're hiding in the bathroom. He's like, where are your kids? I'm like, oh, they're over there. He kind of walks in, guys, come on out, give me a high five, gives them both a high five and turns around. My youngest son just turns around and hauls off and punch him in the nuts as hard as he can. <laughs> no, Is literally, the yeah, the youngest one, as hard as he can. Wow. And he's like, What's wrong with this kid? <laughs> Dude, this kid's some counseling. And he just, he loved, that's what he does. You know, we, my, my son scored a basket. My oldest son scored a basket at his basketball game last week. And my, my youngest son's ideal of celebrating and, you know, sharing in his older brother's triumph was turning around and punching me in the nuts. <laughs> That's, that's what he does. You, you need to get him out of that habit. Uh, <laughs> did they understand why they couldn't come to see the lovely teddy bear film? Absolutely not. They're thinking, oh my God, Daddy, finally, it's a movie with you and the teddy bear. You're laughing, you're having fun. <laughs> you can see this, and obviously Ted is uh, very inappropriate. My wife is very conservative. I'm thinking, you know, the boys... You know, eight, nine. We'll show them the movie. Yeah. She's like 24, 25. <laughs> <laughs> Never show the daughters, which I completely agree. Was Ted set in Boston because you like doing the Boston accent? No, it was set in Boston, and there were many jokes that offended me and my family. <laughs> but I just read the script, and I met Seth, and I liked it. But, uh... I heard he's good at voices, so if he's good at voices, I want to do a challenge. I want to challenge you. Oh, shit. I want to challenge you to a big dick contest. I do. <laughs> <laughs> because I forgot mine at home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to really challenge you to a voice contest. Okay. Oh, because Sarah... Sarah's my backup. No, but also okay. Sarah... No, Sarah's... He'll back you up. I, okay, he's... fantastic. She's the real deal. No, Sarah Sarah knows her Boston voices, because you wasn't your dad. He was I, Boston. I'm still pretty shitty at it, but I can do my dad. My dad... I don't want to th interrupt this thing. No. My dad had a... You're at her um, <laughs> retail store, a discount women's clothing store called Crazy Sophie's Factory Outlet. It smells so good. Uh -huh. I know. That's right. That's my we did his own radio ads. So he'd go, 
I'm Crazy Donald, Crazy Sophie's husband. When I see the prices at the mall, I just want to vomit. <laughs> well, let's do this. What's this competition? Okay. Go. All right, well, no, they asked me if I could do Ted's voice, which is like, it's not fair. You know, it's just like a hyped up version of the Boston accent. So, fuck it, Johnny, come on, we're Thunder Buddies for life. Yeah, fuck it, Johnny. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> But you not really the fucking thing I'm me. I'm not fucking control your mind. But you do, but you do noises. You don't just do voices. No, he do... does. He's like the guy from the Beverly Hills uh, or the, the uh, police, police academy. academy. Yeah. <laughs> can, you do, can you do all not, that? Not as good as that guy. Nowhere near it. Oh, what can you do? What can you do? I do a synthesizer. Man. <clears throat> I just hope you didn't put that on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I play racquetball, I play karate, and I. And also, I've got a 1980s uh, silencer. So it's uh, let's like... hear that. <laughs> 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 I have to do the action with it. Well, your dad, your dad, he's, he's, does he speak with a German accent? No, we just make noises to each other. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> your dad really follows your career, doesn't he? Yeah. He sort of tells me what I'm doing before. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, you know, so he's, he's got me on Google Alert, which is very, very frustrating. <laughs> kind of worrying. It's sweet and creepy at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, no, but, uh, so, yeah, he's like, so I hear you're going to be doing this film next, or I say, I don't like your new haircut, or whatever, what, whatever it is, you know. So, so he follows you through that. But he must find yeah. out some bizarre things about you. Yes. <laughs> Does he know you were Some naked of it's in that movie? True. <laughs> um, no, I kept that secret. Oh I just saw shame. I'm like, Next. I can see your penis in front of my face. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in, in terms of being awkward, Michael, what was going on in your head? You thought it was a good idea to invite your parents to the premiere of Shame. <laughs> No, yeah. Um, How did that go? Well, you know, my mother didn't end up turning up, so that was okay. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, mom went and checked it out. Uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, when it came out in Tralee, actually, I think. Nice, no, very David. Yeah. Yeah. It was a day out, you know, got all our friends together. Yeah. Uh, well, go see Michael's new film. Come on. Yeah. So, <laughs> No, you know, they're, 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 uh, <laughs> I can just see it now. They're open-minded people. Were you surprised when it, like, you know, your penis had its own Twitter account, and, <laughs> and George Clooney talking about it at the Golden, like, that's weird. Well, I suppose it's just kind of like, you know, it's kind of, just sort of, I, I guess, sort of reflects, you know, how our sort of relationship with that is. You know, people are still kind of awkward about it. Yeah, it's called and uncomfortable. Our... Uh, so, you know, <laughs> like, what, what do you do with it? You know? Well, you've got everything out, haven't you? You let it all hang out in. Uh... I did, but it... yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. Was it Take This Waltz with mm -hmm. um, Michelle Williams? Yeah. But it wasn't sexual. It was just like, it was very non-sexual. Because women, on a daily basis, are naked around each other, you know? You're changing, you're getting clothes on, one, one's in the tub, one's reading a magazine. <laughs> it's just a very natural thing, but you never see that reflected no, in movies. It's only in a sexual way with lighting and, 
You know, so... Or, or is that a dormitory or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's in life. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm it's all the time. Like, today, I was <laughs> Go to the restroom and the dressing room, and then all of a sudden you just get naked and everybody's naked. And... Hey, listen. You're showing your breasts? Let's and... just have a good time. We're all <laughs> <laughs> I turn I turn to Sarah Silverman because I know a lot about you because I've read The Bedwetter, which is oh. an excellent book. Uh, it's it's an autobiography, it's very funny, it's uh, incredibly honest, God knows. And uh, it's still available, isn't it? You can still buy the shops. We did. Do books stop being available? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, but... Yep. Classics. Yeah. Gonna happen. But that, well, obviously not. <laughs> not this book. Not. <laughs> this book will be around forever. But what's weird about this book is it seems so unlikely. But this is kind of what got you your part in Wreck It Ralph, the Disney yeah. movie. I didn't realize it, but it's true. Yeah. So the director read the book and thought she's perfect as a cartoon character. She'd be a great glitch. That's right. Oh. Yeah. You've seen the movie how many times? At ten, <laughs> honestly, and about twenty in bootleg. Playing with his kids. Oh my God, my kids absolutely love the movie. Mm. Such a, an inspiring movie. You know, I have two boys and two girls, and she, uh, she changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's like a kind of weird foreign yeah. film. Yeah. 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 The There'll be subtitles yeah. in a minute now. Yeah. And I'm the innkeeper. Yeah. I'll just top up your glasses and leave. Yeah. <laughs> but the movie, Wreck It Ralph, so the character is written for you and around you. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, wanna, I feel. Cocky saying that, but uh. But it's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a nine year old girl, by the way. <laughs> like... What is it? Just so people know what we're talking about, uh, let's watch a clip. This is when Wreck It Ralph, he's left his game, he's entered yours. Sugar Rush? Sugar Rush. Yeah, I live in a game called Sugar Rush. It's a racing game, but the other kids won't let me race because they say I'm a glitch. And this is the first time you meet. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph. And Ralph is wreaking havoc in your game. Yeah, he's causing mass destruction. And you just want to get back into the race. Exactly. You want a chance to race. Why aren't those girls giving you a chance to race? <laughs> right? Do I know that story? <laughs> Ralph is wow. a bad guy. He's a bad guy but in his not, game. But he's not, but he's a good he guy. He's like my good. character. He's very much like Broken City. He's flawed. <laughs> Wow. But he, he still brought redemption. it back. Well done. Very good. Oh, he wants to like Broken City. And wow. <laughs> Which I yeah. saw ten times with my What kids. better than a weird... <laughs> this is the clip. This is the clip. Here it is. What's your name? Uh, Ralph. Wreck it, Ralph. You're not from here, are you? No, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, not from right in this area. I'm just doing some work here. What kind of work? There's some routine candy tree trimming. Uh, you probably want to stand back. In fact, this whole area is technically closed while we're trimming. Who's we? Candy tree department. Oh. Where is everybody else? Oh, it's just me today. Uh, so you just meant like the royal we? Yup. That's right. Hey, are you a hobo? No, <laughs> I'm not a hobo. But I am busy. Okay, so you go, go home. What's that? didn't hear you. Your breath is so bad it made my ears numb. Listen, I try to be nice. <laughs> You're mimicking You're me. You're mimicking me. Okay. <laughs> that is rude, and this <laughs> conversation is <laughs> over. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't grab that branch if I were you. I'm from the candy tree department, so I know it's... It's a double strike. <laughs> Double stripes break, good doy. Hey, why are your hands so freakishly big? Uh, I don't know. Why are you so freakishly annoying? 
Because it's you. It's you. It's me. <laughs> uh, the good thing about big movies is you get merchandising. And uh, Sarah is now an adorable doll. Which is, it's quite nice, isn't it? It's quite nice. And it speaks. It says things. Did you really do it? Oh, yeah. Because Tom Hanks gets his brother to do the uh, Woody doll. Oh. Is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an urban myth. My brother does my show. Does he really? Hell, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of that. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing, girl? Take me two seconds. Oh, was a star. It's cute. But now, while I was in the shop, it's all tax deductible. So, um... <laughs> How cute is that? Uh, also, how expensive is that? Yeah. But, uh, he speaks to... Hey, Johnny, how about a beer, huh? Couple of Brustoyevskis? Hang on, let me put them up the microphone. Okay, so I'll start with her. So. Okay, that's a good start to a conversation. Okay. Let's try him. <laughs> Come here, you bastard. It's <laughs> cute. She replies with. <laughs> possibly fainted. Oh, I like to do to her. I might call it dirty fuzzy. So I'm talking about that dirty <laughs> yeah. That's what I and said to She you replies, I've got a date with destiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done, Rolls. Very nice. Very nice. Very good. Now. Um, and the glitch, because it's based on your childhood, what's the what was the glitch in your life? I think what he saw in the book is that I was a bedwetter, like into my teens, and uh, I, it was humiliating, and that was kind of like something I thought would be my greatest shame, you know? And then I think the, the kind of the lesson of the movie, which is kind of the lesson of the book, which is um, something that you think is your biggest downfall, something that you think you're going to be ashamed of your whole life if you let it can be your superpower, you know? No, no it's true. <laughs> oh, God, thank you. Good. 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 It's a British audience. They were like, whatever. Yeah. No, <laughs> I like to start a pause. No, what I like, but also what's great is that there's stories in this book that could have been someone's kind of childhood trauma, but in your version, they're anecdotes. Like the, the sleepover okay. when that lady came in. Elvis Presley saved my life in a way because I was at a sleepover party when I was six or seven. And uh, um, I had to borrow pajamas. I didn't know it was a sleepover. And then she's like, it's a sleepover. And I said, well, I've got to call my mom and see. And then I'm praying my mom will say no, but she said yes. And uh, I had to borrow pajamas. And I, usually I would just have to, like, pinch myself awake all night, you know, just to, to not pee. And then I did. I fell asleep, and I did, and I woke up. And, and she had s way too sexy pajamas for a six-year-old. <laughs> she was, like, pageant mom. She gave her daughter, like, banana curls every day. And it was, like, sexy harem pajamas, I do it. And they're drenched. So I, everyone's getting changed, and I'm just numb inside, taking up my... I'm just doing what everyone else is doing, you know? And her mother walks in and she steps right in. <laughs> she steps right in my pee pajamas. And, she, and this is what, can you imagine? You sit this? there. <laughs> this is with a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
this is so inappropriate. Aww. Okay, let's keep that. That's wrong, Rush. Don't don't touch the man oh, there. I was I was looking for this. <laughs> you hid it for me, and I. I... Sorry. Uh, uh, Sorry. Take yourself down. Take yourself down. <laughs> I apologize. Wow. Hey, if you want this, then. What oh, is my mic? You're gonna go. No, you don't. You don't need it. It was just over there. You could <laughs> throw it under the sofa if you want. You're if, fine. Yeah. No, if there you. you... <laughs> So, we're getting to the end of this bloody story. So, the, the, so the uh, woman... Uh, oh, yeah, um, yeah, we should. We should. She stepped in it in my... In, yes. Could you imagine yeah. being a mother and doing this? She goes, yeah. who did this? <laughs> and I'm just, like, paralyzed Coming with fear. <laughs> Can I finish this? <laughs> Me too. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Finish the story. Just when I think she's going to kill me, the husband walks in and says, Elvis Presley died. Oh. <laughs> See? We got there in the end. He is awesome. Nice. Woo! That was quite a Oh. Hey, that's pretty tough. What are you looking at? My tights under my I this, wanted to make sure this. your wire was still connected yeah. to your microphone. Um, <laughs> very quickly, can you just tell us a bit? Your grandmother sounds so lovely. There's a, a, a lovely scene on her deathbed. <sighs> now, behave. Behave. This is a good story. I'll keep it tight. Okay. <laughs> In America and in show business. <laughs> you guys are disgusting. <laughs> but now I've subconsciously started doing Kegel exercises. <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandmother, my Nana, was dying. She's on her deathbed. It was the kind of thing where she just was ready. She had said goodbye. And every time she woke up, she's like, am I still here? And she'd be like, yes. she be like, so she opens her eyes, and my sister Laura and I are sitting on either side of her. And she looks up at us and she goes, So beautiful. And then jokingly, Laura and I are like, She's talking to me. No, she's talking to me. And like with her last breath, she was like, Laura. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Both of you. Meanwhile, meanwhile. I'm, I'm still being host over here. Uh, then, uh, oh, I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still being host over here. Now, Michael Fassbender down the end there. So, it, very different childhood in that you grew up in rural Ireland. Mm. But what's weird about this is that still kind of Hollywood comes to call. So, you know, you had Star Wars. Didn't you think you were Superman when you were a kid? When I was a kid? <laughs> um, yes, I did, actually, yeah. I actually had the Superman outfit. But did you genuinely it. believe you were Superman? Yeah. Did you think you could fly? I had a ringing in my ear one night, and I thought it was a calling to find kryptonite in, <laughs> in the garage. Uh, but I was too tired to get up out of bed. <laughs> Yeah, no, I had It was the kryptonite, it was too close. There was plenty of kids that thought the same, you know? I, I, I mean, I we sort of, you know, had the suit and I wanted to take it to the swimming pool and practice safely. So I did, you know, I was thinking. Yes, of course. Um, but yeah, my cousin and I had a good game where he would sort of be dressed as a civilian child, of course. And, uh, and then he'd run behind the bush and I'd come out, you know... Dressed as Superman. Dressed as Superman, yeah. Like the yeah. phone box. So. Yeah, but well, we used a bush. <laughs> it was Ireland. It was simple, happier times. <laughs> and then Clark had run behind a bush. <laughs> <laughs> but 
You sound very driven. Like, how old were you when you directed a stage version of Reservoir Dogs? Um, I was uh, 18. Um, and you were in it as well? Yeah, I played Mr. Pink and, uh, and directed and sort of, you know, managed to get it together somehow. Just really, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but just, you know, wanted to do it and... Um, it was great, yeah. Just did, organized all my friends together. Did you go to the butchers and get like real blood and stuff? We got, uh, we had a lamb chop for the year, um, <laughs> which we sort of, you know, filleted down to the, the right size. But it's kind of cool, you know, just sort of imagination-wise, how you go about doing stuff. You know, we stopped cars in the street with pretend guns and like threw flyers in their window and stuff like that. Of course, if you did that in America, you'd get shot, I'd imagine. <laughs> did you tell Quentin Tarantino when you met him? Yes. <laughs> but I told him that it was for charity. He was like, that's cool, man. As long as nobody's taking any money out of my shit. I was like, okay, you know, fine, it was for charity. You've done that thing of kind of going into big kind of studio movies now, like Prometheus mm. and X-Men. They're both coming back, aren't they? Is there another Prometheus as well, or...? I think so. I, I, I don't know. Um... You know, usually, they should tell you. Well, <laughs> they kind of have the choice to, if, if it makes enough money, they kind of, they have you by contract usually. Oh, anyway. okay. But, uh, so, if they make enough money, they usually sort of go for another And one. in X-Men, it was you and James McAvoy, and obviously there's big stunts and things go wrong, people get hurt, but you weren't even filming when you and James... James Mac, you've had him here. Oh, he's, yeah. He's pretty crazy. No, he's lovely. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. fantastic, uh, but he's crazy. Um, but uh, he's, uh, we were sort of, you know, just mucking around on the, you know, the golf carts or whatever you go between uh, studios or whatever. Uh, so yeah, James jumped behind the wheel and he was off and was in one of the faster ones. I think it goes about seven miles an hour as opposed to five. <laughs> and uh, and we were sort of going, weaving through the cars, we whatever, heading back to base camp where the trailers are. And while he was steering, I decided I, I would do sort of. I would sort of do opposite balance, you know, oh, so yes, that the outside tires would grip in and essentially you get most grip and take the corners oh, faster. Oh, no, it's one of those trip and fell and land in each other's. No. We crashed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, close, close, just, close, but it's not. No, no, actually, just... that's a happy tale. Look, you ruined the <laughs> peeing story, now you're going to ruin yeah, the golf sure. course. <laughs> I apologize. I, I napped for six or seven minutes and then I woke up. Wow, your timing is atrocious. Oh. So tell me how you so, and so you're on the Michael, golf course. Uh, tell court, how you and James McAvoy it. intertwined. Well, <laughs> through his through his creative driving, essentially, we pulled into. into he the, was the driver. The he was the driver. I was counterbalancing at the back. In the As I said already, if you were listening, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> um, you. So anyway, you uh, got driven. So yeah. Anyway, we we went flying into the base camp, and the wheels dug in a little bit too much, so we took wow. a sort of swerve to the left and crashed into the back of a Lexus. And yeah. He went and he went flying out of the car, which was fine, but I oh. went flying over the back and ended up where he was sitting. So I got the blame for everything. <laughs> Like twins. Twins were born uh, there on, on the sidewalk. There. That was a separate incident. Oh. That was a separate incident. I don't know what chateau that red wine came from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but my God. They, can I just say, somewhere at the back, there's Laura Mvulu who has to sing a song. She's thinking, when am I coming on? <laughs> She's like, yeah, this is all very funny. I have to sing a song. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> You'll meet her shortly. It's a lovely song. Don't join in. <laughs> I thought it was worth saying that. <laughs> uh, now, this young singer is tipped for greatness in 2013. Her debut album comes out next month. And now, performing her brand new single, Green Garden, please welcome Laura Umvula. <laughs> Take me outside.
sit in the green garden, nobody out there, but it's so can now, be in the sunlight, don't mind if rain falls, take me outside, sit in the green garden, oh. Taking my shoes off, walking the carpet, a green velvet. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe, is it true that that's your first TV yes. performance? Yes. But you, look at you, cool as a cucumber. Oh. It's such a pretty song. I love the last single, She, as well. And uh, this new album, Sing to the Moon, is out on the 4th of March. And the Green Garden is on the 24th of February. It's just, yes. uh, congratulations. It's just fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. You're like the young Emily Sande. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how fast the music industry changes now. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. We're looking for a young Emily Sante. Uh, yeah. We got her. We got her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, reading about you, you know, like all the people, you know, you've made it now. You've made it. Really? You have okay. made it. Wow. Seriously, this is it. You've made it. <laughs> Depressing, isn't it? It's like you, you, you dreamt so big. <laughs> this is it. Uh, but, but like everybody, you did other. You were a receptionist, and then you, you, you decided to be a music supply teacher. Was that? Well, I, I didn't quite decide oh, quite okay. like that. I kind of fell into it. That sounds bad, but. Um, but I you was, thought you'd enjoy it because I it would combine be, music with helping right, children. Right. Um, and it was a great challenge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I found it really tough. Um, yeah. I wasn't a great teacher, I don't think. Will there be kids watching this going, Oh my God, that's that <laughs> woman we used to throw things at. <laughs> yeah, I never, yeah, I yeah. never listened to a word she said. <laughs> Oh, she's a singer? Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it, but it must be lovely now. And what, what are you going to Are you planning tours and or, yeah, during the, the um, album? I'm going to tour with Jessie Ware in March, which is unbelievably exciting for me. You don't um, need her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she's amazing. So. Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> okay. Not as good as you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the graph of that concert is just going to go like that. Yeah. <laughs> what? <Okay. laughs> no, she's very good. She's very good. Uh, listen, congratulations and good Thank luck you. with it all and good luck with the album. Thank you. I am actually going to spend money and buy it. <laughs> unless okay. it's sent to me. Uh, <laughs> right, before we go tonight, uh, let's pay a visit to the big red chair. So who have we got there? Oh, hello. Hello. oh God! Oh God! <laughs> it's that time. You look lovely. What's your name? Megan. And uh, where are you from, Megan? I'm from Dublin. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> this could be. This is going to be quite a short That's section. <laughs> Brace yourself, Megan. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do in Dublin? I'm a nurse. I live here now, though. I moved She's a nurse. Oh, Mom. you poor thing. Why don't you help me? <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> nurse your own wounds? <laughs> what is she nursing? <laughs> She's just wasting a her nursing time. Oh my God. She's wasting her nursing time. And, and a there. woman that's as, as attractive as she is, my <laughs> God, you know how inspiring would be to somebody that's sick? They're in the hospital, they see an attractive young lady who's actually committed to herself not to try to become some sort of star or starlet. You know, being some sort of oh, like is, reality she's, star. She sat in a chair. I don't think she's trying to be a starlet. <laughs> she said she could have been a nurse, but she decided to no, nurse her nurse. aspirations as no, like a, a reality star. She oh, is she a did? Nurse. She did? She's a nurse. Oh, let's try it again. And give me another chance. She said four words. Really? She said, I am a nurse. <laughs> She was nursing a hangover. She went out to a club with. Yeah. Bottom line is, you flipped. I apologize. Us. All right, let me do this again. I will redeem myself. Like my character in Broken City, <laughs> this is a redemption story. Okay, who's the next person? Oh, no, it's her Give again. Give me somebody. It's her again. Her again? It's the nurse again. <laughs> Her disposition. Oh, stop it! <laughs> She's a nurse. Hi. 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 I like the. Uh, okay. Okay, now quickly. Hey. Sorry, sorry, quickly. So, a couple of months ago, I was at the gym, full face makeup on, ready to do Why my Why would weights. you wear makeup to the gym? <laughs> Workout exercise inspire people that need to eat right. Like exercise. That it's okay to go to the gym. You don't have to. You're not going to compete wearing makeup to the gym. Trying to look. Bring her back. I like her. I don't want to give her another 
a shot. Okay, we're bringing her back. We're bringing her back. Just, we are. We're bringing her back. She's a bit bruised. But you she's know what? still game. She's still game. That smile. Okay, so you're she at the, me of you're you, at the so gym. Far. You're at the gym. So I love I'm it. The gym. She's at the makeup. gym. Yeah. She's wearing makeup. Why? Just let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Okay. So I had my tightest top on. I noticed a group. <laughs> She wear her tightest top with makeup. <laughs> Why? <laughs> to, to look very attractive. I right, bring her back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> bring her back and let her get the end. Okay. Here she is. Here she is. Here she is. Hey. Okay. She's got whiplash now. Okay. She's got whiplash. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm looking after you. Okay. <laughs> you're wearing a tight top. You're covered in makeup. We disagree with all of that, but on you go. <laughs> So the purpose of all the makeup was in case I met Prince Charming at the gym. Oh, yes. So I had to be prepared. So yes. I was looking at these really good looking group of guys that were standing nearby. You want groups then? So I get onto the fitness hall <laughs> and I start doing my push ups. And I tried to look up to give him like a little smile. What actually happened was I fell off the fitness you know what ball, smile means. slapped into the treadmill, and caused the runner on the treadmill to fall off the treadmill on top of me. Turned around and the good-looking guys just walked away. That's my story. That actually was a terrible story. <laughs> you were right. You were right. And that's all we've got time for. If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go in the red chair, you can contact us via our website at this address. And thank you so much to my guest tonight, Laura Muller. Comedian Matt Lucas, music Rita Ora, plus the cooking legend that is Saint Delia Smith herself. I'll see you then. Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>Mankind at war with fire-breathing dragons next. Matthew McConaughey and Christian Bale star in the film Reign of Fire.